Nothing in space is stationary. The movement of objects is influenced by gravity. The sun is the biggest object in the solar system. Thus, everything rotates around it. But that's not entirely true, because solar system objects don't orbit the exact center of the sun. Why? That's because other objects orbiting the sun have mass as well. Two celestial objects orbit each other around their common center of mass, also known as the barycenter. And the barycenter differs. The barycenter between Earth and the sun, for example, is very close to the center of the sun. But it's an entirely different story with Jupiter, which is about 318 times more massive than Earth. Jupiter is a thousand times less massive than the Sun, but it's the second most massive object in the solar system. The barycenter of Jupiter and the Sun isn't at or near the center of the Sun. It's actually outside the Sun's surface. Over here, the center of mass is never 100% at the center of the Sun. Without mass, there would be no gravity. And without gravity, there would be no orbits. During the early creation of our solar system, dust, gas, and ice moved through space with speed and momentum, surrounding the most massive object, the Sun. Eventually, these small bits of dust and gas coalesced just like rolling snowballs until they formed today's planets, moons, asteroids, and comets. This is why all objects have orbits around the Sun in the same direction, and more or less the same plane. An orbit is essentially a state of falling where you never hit the ground. As a spacecraft orbits Earth relatively fast, it keeps falling toward it, and as it falls, the Earth curves away from under the spacecraft at the same rate. The spacecraft is basically falling with enough forward momentum so that it matches the Earth's curvature. Let's talk about the different types of Earth orbits. First, low Earth orbit, LEO, is relatively close to Earth's surface at an altitude between 160 to 1,000 kilometers, 99 to 621 miles above Earth. LEO is primarily used for communication and remote sensing satellite systems. It's home to the International Space Station and Hubble Space Telescope. The next type of orbit is the Medium Earth Orbit, or MEO. This one has an altitude between 2,000 and 35,000 kilometers, 1,243 and 22,236 miles above sea level. This orbit is used for navigation systems, including the U.S. Global Positioning System, GPS. Then we have geosynchronous and geostationary orbits, GSO and GEO, respectively. These ones are 35,786 kilometers, 22,236 miles, in altitude above Earth. The speeds of objects in GSO match the Earth's rotation, yielding a consistent position over a single longitude. GEO also matches the planet's rotation. However, objects in GEO only orbit Earth's equator, and ground observers, they appear in a fixed position in the sky. Both GSO and GEO are used for telecommunications and Earth observation. Next, we move on to polar orbit, which is used for Earth mapping, measuring atmospheric conditions, long-term Earth observation, and reconnaissance satellites, which are satellites launched by a country, to provide intelligence information on the military activities of foreign countries. A polar orbit is a type of low Earth orbit, at an altitude between 200 to 1,000 kilometers, 124 to 621 miles. A sun-synchronous orbit, or SSO, is a type of polar orbit, Objects in this type of orbit are synchronous with the Sun, meaning they pass over an Earth region at the same local time every day. A satellite in a Sun-synchronous orbit would usually be at an altitude of between 600 to 800 kilometers, or 370 to 497 miles. And finally, we have the highly elliptical orbit, or HEO, whose shape is oblong, meaning it comes very close to Earth and then moves farther away. HEO orbit has a low perigee altitude of under 1,000 kilometers, 621 miles, and a high apogee altitude of over 35,750 six kilometers, 22,217 miles. Satellites in this orbit are suited for communications, satellite radio, remote sensing, and other applications. Don't forget to watch the video on the right and subscribe. Thanks for being part of Cosmonology.